Mommy, who is that? No one, baby. I think it was just an illusion. Mommy, who are these people? Get out of the car! Nora, unfazed, rolls down the window and leans casually on the door. Is something wrong? Let's not make my job hard. We are here for Mr. Hunt's son. Your target is Mr. Hunt's son? Hand him over and we will let you go. If you don't, you won't live to see another day. Nora realizes they are after her son and tightens her grip. Cherry, close your eyes and sing. Okay, Mommy. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Cherry starts singing a nursery rhyme as Nora takes down the attackers with her swift moves. Nora finishes off the attackers, leaving them disabled on the ground. Who are you? Ben, Loris. Nora interrogates Scarface, revealing her hacking skills to terrify him. Remember, if anything happens to young Mr. Hunt, I will come for you. Scarface, terrified, nods in agreement. Nora walks back to the SUV. Let's go. We shouldn't delay your father's birthday celebrations. Before she could enter the car, Scarface's desperate cry stopped her. They won't stop coming. Too many people want him dead. Nora, intrigued, looks back, questioning Scarface. What did you say? We have a live chat room where we accept contracts. There have been multiple kill orders for the boy over the years. Many are willing to pay a lot of money. Do you know who took out the contract on him? Scarface, intimidated, admits the truth. Mr. Hunt is powerful and has many enemies in the business world. People wish him harm. Remember what I told you. Anything happens to that boy, and I'm coming after you. Nora, lost in thought, issues a stern warning. Scarface turns to his men and issues the same warning. We will keep hiding. We are protecting the kid now. If anything happens to him, I will come after all of you. Scarface's men think of their next move as Nora drives away. Nora turns the car and stops. She jumps into the back seat, catching Jerry's attention. What's the matter, Mommy? Nora gets her bag and takes out her makeup kit. Just need a quick makeover. Let's not tell your dad the truth just yet. It's too dangerous. We will smuggle your brother out someday, go abroad together, and that will be the end of it. Cherry wonders if her mother's opinion of her father has diminished again after she learns about the enemies. Meanwhile, in Hunt Mansion, Justin gets interrupted by Pete's serious announcement. Daddy, I have to tell you something. What is it? Pete hesitates for a moment, then blurts out the revelation. You have a daughter. Oh? Where is she? Pete assures him that they will meet soon, but a text from Cherry interrupts the moment. Mommy says she doesn't want to tell Daddy anymore. Don't say anything, okay? Pete stiffens as Justin silently observes him. Daddy, look at me. Am I cute? Am I not adorable? Do I look like a little girl? Life is too hard. Justin was on the verge of a meltdown. Pete walks away, burdened by responsibility no child should bear. Suddenly, the doorbell rings, and Justin hurries to answer it. He takes a moment to compose himself before opening the door with a smile. Chester, surprised to be welcomed, stands in the doorway. Justin questioned his presence. You are actually opening the door for me? Why are you here? In the kitchen, Sean and the others were preparing lunch for the supposed birthday party. The doorbell rings again. Chester saw Tina York entering. Justin is shocked. Happy birthday, Mr. Hunt. What are you doing here? Tina tries to be gracious. A cold Justin expresses discomfort with her presence. The doorbell rings again. Tina opens the door and sees Nora. Why are you here? Why can't I be here? You are not his equal, Miss Smith. I'd suggest that you stop daydreaming. Also, Mr. Hunt has said that it's not convenient for him to host female guests at home today. Please leave. Tina shuts the door and quickly re-enters the house, giving a fabricated explanation to Justin. It's nothing. The building management staff came to wish you a happy birthday. They won't disturb you. Chester, playing games on his phone, glances awkwardly, aware of the tension in the room. Are you waiting for someone, Justin? No, I'm not. Not invited. Perfect. Tina, eavesdropping on their conversation, gets happy. She was relieved that Justin hadn't invited Nora. Pete runs out of the room, addressing Justin about the refusal to let Nora in. Daddy... Why did you refuse to let Mommy in? Justin's eyes darken immediately at Pete's words. He rushes towards the door and opens it, revealing a bored Nora. He felt a slight tremor in his heart on seeing her. I have been told it's not convenient for you to host female guests today, Mr. Hunt. It is indeed inconvenient for other female guests, but we're expecting a special little female guest today. 
Justin removes his gaze away from Nora and notices Cherry next to her, looking like a clown. That old lady says she's not letting us in. Justin frowns and turns to Tina, who looks dumbfounded. Mr. Hunt, I wasn't lying to you on purpose. Moments ago, you said that it's inconvenient for you to host female guests. I must have misunderstood. As for what I said about it being the building management staff. Tina turns to Nora and delivers a made-up explanation. Ugh, Mr. Hunt hates women who show up at his home uninvited. I was afraid that he would get mad at you if he knew you were here. So I told a white lie. But as it turns out, he had invited you. I hope you can understand. I didn't mean to overreact. Nora rolls her eyes at Tina's explanation. Am I supposed to thank you then? No, it's fine. After all, <laughs> I was the one who made a mistake. Fortunately, I didn't cause any misunderstandings. Nora was about to reply when a voice interrupts. You sure know how to make excuses for yourself, Miss York. You are obviously trying to hog Mr. Hunt by driving other women away. No, I wasn't. I the moment Tina turns and sees Lawrence, her expression changes dramatically. Nora frowned as she slightly recognized the voice. Who are you? Your memory isn't very good. We met in California. I'm Lawrence Zimmer, Mr. Hunt's executive assistant. Nora notices Lawrence's tan and couldn't help but comment. Why are you so tan now? Who wouldn't get a little tan after a forced holiday? Please don't smile. The sun has dried out your skin. You're going to get terrible wrinkles. Nora's comment leaves Lawrence clenching his jaw. Nora and Jerry walk past him. Tina, determined, follows them, but Lawrence stops her. Miss York, it's Mr. Hunt's birthday, so it's inconvenient for us to host female guests today. He leads her outside, slamming the door with a loud bang. Tina was left stunned. Nora and Cherry join the party and spot a birthday card on the coffee table. She picks it up. Is that the birthday card your son made for you? Pete stares at Cherry's strange cloud makeup and nods. Nora gives the card a thoughtful look before reluctantly putting it down. Daddy! Handwriting is ugly. Later, after the party got over, Nora and Cherry leave while Justin, Sean, and Lawrence discuss Pete's safety. Nothing about Pete must be leaked. Create a screening system. That way, if photos of Pete are surfaced anywhere on the internet, we'll be notified right away. Yes, sir. And who the hell is asking for their death this time? Who is behind the repeated attempts to kidnap Pete? And what is their ultimate motive? Can Justin and Nora keep Pete's existence hidden from those who seek to harm him? What will be the consequences of Tina's deception, and how will it impact their life? To find out what happens next, don't let your excitement die! The full audio series is on the Pocket FM app. Tap the link in the description to install now.